Hi, good day, everybody. It's Martin here from Rev1. Hope everybody's doing super well and everybody's having a good week. Uh, here we are again on the last in the Lunch and Learn Series 1. So we'll just wait for a few minutes for everybody to come in. Hey, Chris, my man. Wow. You've, you've kept with us the whole distance. Great to see you again. I'll just give people a couple of minutes to dive in. So I think we'll get started anyway, Emma. So, um, so yeah, a, a lot of people are actually uh, coming on demand. So they, they, we had to look at the stats, and people are actually going back to these and looking at them on demand. So we'll just we'll just press on, and uh, you know we'll 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 uh, we'll keep on going. So okay, Emma, you could please move on. That's it. So this week, it's all about uh, bringing everything that we've done over the past eight weeks, would you believe, uh, all together. And it's the combination of everything we've gone over, all put into this thing that we called commissioning for the new era. So here's a good quote by Tony Shi. You know, customer service shouldn't just be the department, it should be the entire company. So what we're gonna be talking about today is value maximization and, uh, you know, there's a traditional approach to maximization in terms of company theory, and there is calculations, and there's a whole theoretical uh, underpinning that goes towards uh, value maximization. Essentially, it's all about value va maximizing the value to the shareholders. That's the traditional approach. We've turned that right on its head, and we've pointed the value maximization not internally but externally on the client. So we've got a, a customer-centric model that, um, that we'll, we'll come on to in a minute. But that's what today's all about. It's maximizing the value, not necessarily to the company, but to the client. And if we, if we make that differentiation up front, uh, everybody wins. It's a win-win for the clients. And that's what, we're, that's what we're all about. So Tony Shea, he was um, he's a billionaire. As you probably know him from the internet and uh, from Zappos. So... He thinks that as well, and if it's good enough for him, it's certainly good enough for us, so there we go. Okay, Emma? So yeah, just to recap, we, we've been over this journey now for the last eight weeks. We, we started right back in August with COD, what we call COD now, Commissioning On Demand. Uh, then we looked into tracker technologies, and then we broke down over the next three weeks, our three packages for facilities readiness, um, the CMS for tracker check, and the MMS for tracker run. And then we had to look at the vertical integration model, and then we went on to pre-commissioning, and now we're wrapping it all up in terms of value maximization. So what you're going to see today is really all those elements built into our standard sales pitch for how who we are, what we do, and how we do it within Rev1. Okay, Emma? So generally we start, and here we are, we're on the digital transformation of the CSU to operations delivery process and model. And uh, as we've kept saying all the way along, our strap line is we help projects run smoother. Okay. So we, we cover three areas, who we are, uh, the T3 strategy, which we went over earlier on in the series and also commissioning on demand. And then we went into the technology and then we're gonna to look to the future. Okay, Emma. So we present our enterprise CSU technology to do three things, really. One is to streamline the delivery process. So, you know, instead of just digitalization for digitalization's sake, streamlining the delivery process manually is by far, I think what we, what we said in the early, earlier uh, lunch and learns, the best process. Get rid of all the duplication, redundancy, duplication and really streamline it, then start to build your technology solution around it. That's what we've done here at Rev1. 
that increases the efficiency, effective, effectiveness, and productivity. And then through the, the COD model, which we'll touch on again, we'll, uh, we, we, we provide the cost savings through COD. Okay. So who we are, just as a recap, I think certainly, Chris, you know who we are. Uh, but, but, you know, we're an independent technology driven company. We specialize in that back end, but three things really uh, commissioning and startup into operations, facilities, readiness and assurance and maintenance support. Those are the three business streams that we, um, that we kind of own and we've got technology to support each. Um, the, the sectors that we, that we work in are power and renewables, oil and gas, mining, marine infrastructure. And at the bottom there, we've got our offices, head office in Tampa. I'm speaking to you today from Houston. And then we have tracker technologies in Dallas. And then we've got offices in hotspots like Vietnam, Qatar, UAE, India, and UK, where we're actively selling this presentation, this, this, this value proposition that we're showing you today in those areas. And we're actively going after and winning contracts in, in those three areas above. This is our T3, which we went through quite a few weeks ago now, but just a quick recap. T1 is talent, which is a traditional approach to consultancy, getting in on the project early days, uh, looking at the project drivers, coming up with the philosophies, specifically at CSU, estimate, est doing a really good job on estimating, coming up with CTRs, manning resources, all that upfront planning is the, is the cornerstone really of T1, but also the cornerstone of uh, commissioning on demand. Then it goes into T1 for consultancy on facilities readiness and assurance. And also, I would say overflow facilities for things like, I don't know, operating procedures, um, sim ops manuals, commissioning procedures, things that historically a project are very busy doing, uh, you know, they're very busy doing the day-to-day the -day work and they package stuff out. We can do it remotely under T1. Then under T2, um, specifically with uh, commissioning personnel, we, we've been in early on the project, we know what the optimum organization is going to be, and then we're in a great position with our network to provide the directors, the managers, the, the leads, the supervisors, all the way down to the technicians, and also we get we got kind of brought into project services as well. So that's T2, which is the teams, the people element, and then finally T3, which is the technology, and we've been through those packages. We'll touch on them at the end as well, which is tracker prep, tracker check, and tracker run. Okay, Emma. This was our customer-centric model. We found this quote today. Uh, we don't want to push our ideas onto the customer. We simply want to make what they want. So very good quote there. That's actually Laura Ashley, but very, very pertinent to our business as well. We've said this all along. We don't want to push our services and products onto the client. We put our client right in the middle. There, is, there they are in the middle. There's the client in the middle. This is what is important to the client. It's the cost, the value, and the risk. That's the intersection between what they, their needs are and our T3 strategy. So the intersect where they compare and contrast against our strategy is the bit that the magic happens. That's the, the bit in the middle where we, uh, we come up with all the solutions, I would say. We then went on to the COD model, looking at, uh, we had a whole session on COD where we broke it down into three areas, uh, starting with a relationship. It always starts with a relationship with a strategic partnership with the client, coming up with a shared vision, what we're trying to achieve, that's half the battle. And then we broke it down. We, all, we generally break it down with the client into cost efficiencies, value maximization and risk management, risk mitigation. And we brainstorm what's important to the project director on his project in those three areas. We then compare and contrast that with our T3 strategy. And then we come up with some real value added uh, solutions and value maximization is what we're talking about here today. Okay. In layman's terms, commission on demand is pay as you go. You know, instead of a traditional manpower histogram that goes uh, that goes that goes up and up and up, um, and then 
continues to rise as scope increases, things get late. Um, it's basically pay as you go, talent, teams, and technology. So very much front end loading on our T1. We can touch on that in a minute. T1 and T2, getting the right people with the right talent at the right time. And then we're able to then lower, certainly for planning and preparation, the manpower requirements for the project and the, pro the, the profile going forward. So we optimize the CSU process. We collect data. This is data harvesting. Uh, once we've got the data, it's not dumb data, it's very smart data, we can analyze the data, we can then provide insights with the whole objective imp of improving the process. For many years we've collected data, it's sat in various folders, <laughs> hidden away, um, everybody's talked about lessons learned, but we haven't really done too much with it, now is the time we've got smart data, we can improve the process and delight the customer at the end of the day, because we're making continuous improvement. I mean, this is this is nothing uh, nothing magical. It's been around for a long time. Plan, do, check, act, improve. But uh, al although it's it's common language, it's not common pro it's not co common practice for sure in our experience. So, okay, Emma. Here's the cost benefit analysis for for COD, uh, which kind of is, is is our underpinning for the whole process. So on a, on a $500 million project, typically commissioning comes in at 4 or 5%, 4% we've said here, $20 million. Okay, Emma. And what we're able to do with front-end loading and getting the right people in at the right time, the T1 strategy, the T2 strategy, uh, not, too, not too many, not too less, but the right um, suitably qualified and experienced people to come in. Um, we're able to reduce that 13350 mandates of $20 million down to 9510, uh, 14 million just over, which represents something like a 30%. I mean, it's not an exact science, but you know, just doing this kind of litmus test, we're able to shave off 30% of the total cost just by COD. Okay, Emma? And maybe just go to the next slide if you wouldn't mind. So the next slide here is the traditional manpower curve in blue at the top. Uh, and you can see there COD is the red. And this is, this is where our main savings are. Uh, the, the main savings are upfront in planning, preparation, into pre-commissioning, where we just don't need all those people anymore. Uh, we, we estimate out, we create CTRs for the deliverables that we want, and we pay as, pay as we go to, do, to do design and develop the, the deliverables. And then it, in, it's saying here in, in commissioning phase that it's almost the same profile. Uh, that's fine, but I'd argue that if we do the traditional approach, which is blue, as soon as we start commissioning, we start getting creep. You know, we start getting things delayed. Um, FATs haven't been done, which have a, has a knock-on effect. And then generally what happens is the project goes to the right. We start to man up and it costs the project manager a lot more money. So. Actually, that's not even covered here. So the 30% is is very conservative um, estimate anyway. And then the bottom is just the cash flow. The COD uh, is at the bottom there in red, and the traditional is the blue at the top. So yeah, a big a big benefit for COD, I would say. Um, superimposed onto our T3 strategy, these two things compare and contrast against what the customer is looking for at the end of the day we've got a real value proposition. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about value maximization, not necessarily to the, to, the, to the service provider, although that will come, but the emphasis being on value maximization to the, to the end customer at the end of the day. Okay, Emma. So here we go. Um, th this is just a, a blow up section of the, the value chain. It, there's obviously design, procurement, construction, and then we, we home in on, on the workflow for CSU. There's a planning, a preparation, and then execution element uh, into operations. This is just to, just to emphasize that it's T1 and T2 and T3, which is the underpinning technology. The combination of all that um, goes into this CSU delivery model for Rev1. Okay. 
Also, value maximization, we had a whole session on this uh, a couple of weeks ago where we looked at the vertical integration model, which is basically uh, you know, lassoing and pulling in all the ancillary services, specialist services that are involved on a CSU project and taking responsibility for it. So that's what we do in terms of Rev1 when we get these turnkey projects. We manage all those interfaces, have strategic alliances with all those companies, and uh, at the end of the day, the client gets one bill for all the services, which cuts down a huge amount of interfaces, as you can imagine. Okay. And then, you know, superimposed, we always said we are a, a technology-driven company. This is our underpinning, our technology. We had a whole session on, well, we had four weeks, actually, on tracker technologies. One was the concept, and then we had a, a separate week on each of the three packages. So we went over this in great detail. Um, but, but just to, as a recap, you know, we've been around since in tracker technologies alone for, uh, two, since 2008, and we wanted to provide all those items there. Great user experience, optimized workflows, mobility and connectivity are important to us, ease of use for the guys at the end of the day, rapid implementation, and the most important, I would argue, su superior client support. It's great having all these systems, but if um, if people can't get the support that they need, well, um, the whole thing starts to fall apart and unravel very, very quickly. Okay, Emma, so we're just going to have a look at Tracker Technologies now just to go through and uh, go over what we went through. This was basically the three packages showing end-to-end -end from design through to decommissioning, really, um, that we, we're well covered with technology. It could could argue that we are end to end of the whole process. Okay. Tracker prep. This is our facilities readiness and assurance tool. I see Ben's on here. We, we went through this in detail this morning, Ben. So thanks for joining us again. Um, but yeah, plan, do, check, and improve. Uh, global standards for operations and facilities, what, what the global requirements are or the corporate requirements are. They're then translated into a series of templates, which we allocate out specific tasks to specific people and track the successful completion. Um, that's monitored in real time. And, and then um, we improve. It's all about improvement. We don't just sit there. Um, we, we identify improvement activities for the process and we build those back in into the loop. So uh, tracker prep very useful tool for operations and facilities readiness and assurance, I would say. Okay. So key features, you know, it's transparency, it's standardization, it's, uh, we, we don't want a small brownfield project to be treated very differently, certainly from the requirements point of view from a large greenfield for any one particular company, they need to be tied back to the same standards, the same corporate policies and procedures. So this is a, a, a standard way of approaching it. And uh, it provides a great audit trail at the end of the day, because everything that we've done on that project to, suit, to satisfy the operations requirements, it's all been documented almost daily. So there's a whole audit trail of uh, what's been done, when it's been done, and then the deliverable is in there at the end of the day, whether that's a report, an FAT, a permit or a consent, with whatever it is, it's all in there as one one document. So, yep, that's it. So that's really a, a quick breakneck, uh, <laughs> high level kind of summary of, of tracker prep. Same with tracker check, which is you know by far our most used product at the moment, which is the traditional completions management system. Uh, we had a whole day on this, and we had a demo as well. So. Hopefully everybody can see this. And and also, you know, as I said at the beginning, these are on demand now. And we're getting a lot of, we, we, you know, it's right in the middle of the day. People are busy. They're trying to grab a sandwich. And so it works for some people. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody. But the good thing is if you go along to the website, you can go back over the eight weeks and you can pick out what you want to, want to go through. And this one is the summation of everything that we've gone through. Um, they're all there for you to have a look at as a, as, a, as a record. So it's good content for the future as well. This this particular day, we looked at Tracker Check. 
which we went over with Andrew and uh, he explained all his background about how he was frustrated in the field and certain things he couldn't do with certain systems. Well, we started with a whiteboard and uh, we redesigned the whole lot and we've got what we believe is, you know, state of the art now CMS. Okay, Emma. Some quick facts there we can go over, you know, but we're using it a lot on Greenfield and uh, Brownfield projects now. So it's, it's beginning to really become the, uh, I would say, de, de facto standard, you know, the, the standard for CMS in the industry for sure. Cloud-based, all that kind of good stuff is there. We can, you can have a read of that at your leisure, but yeah, it's there. Okay, Emma. Yeah, we said earlier up front that mobility and uh, accessibility is very, very important to us. So all, our, all this, is, this is available on the iPhone or Android. Um, you know, I think Andrew, just to go over what he said, but he said, you know, when we was doing the, the testing for this, he, he went out into the field and he asked the guy what they thought of tablets and they weren't impressed at all. They've got, they've got a clipboard and they've got the toolbox and the communicator. And the last thing wanted was some, you know, to take care of another, another implement. So they said, if you can make it for my phone, which is always in my back pocket, um, it's going to be all that much more effective. So that's what, that's exactly what we did. So it works on the iPhone and it works on the Android. Yeah, mob mobility. And then the final package, Tracker Run. Um, here we have, we certainly don't have a Maximo or a SAP uh, by design. This is very much fit for purpose maintenance management at its bare bones, but, but what it does do, it's very, very reliable, runs like a metronome. Um, it, it, uh, it goes in and put, we, in fact, under T1, under our consultancy, we go in there into a plant. We create all the plant maintenance routines from the operations manuals and physically walking down the plant and equipment. We find out what's there. We, we do fit for purpose plant maintenance routines, put them in, set the timer, and off we go. And it works like clockwork. It's a great, great tool. So um, tracker run, maintenance management. Um, it can be used on a project up until the point where we put all that information into SAP or Maximo, um, but it also can run standalone as well. Okay, easy to set up, no limit to the users. This is probably common to all our products. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, limit to the, the single users. Extremely user-friendly, requiring very little training, integrates into Maximo and SAP. Data is easily manipulated and robust KPI reporting. And I think with all our tools now, you know, one of the big things that's coming in over the last few weeks is the power of business intelligence. So all these big, these big uh, software packages like Power BI, we use one that's called Yerby, are phenomenal tools now that you know they, they've revolutionised our our standard uh, dashboards. And uh, the, we're getting some really good insights now. So we don't have to do all the dashboards now. We just plug them into business intelligence software and we get some really great, great results. Okay, Emma. So that's a quick 100 mile an hour, 23 minutes. We've never had a, a lunch and learn that's lasted only 23 minutes and, uh, and no interaction. So if there are any questions, hi, Mark. That's nice to see you on there, my friend. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, you know, please fire away, but this has just been a run through of the eight weeks that we've just gone through. And, uh, it's the combination of everything that we've, we've talked about and all brought into our, what we call the, you know, the rev one value proposition really. So, um, you know, we've just had CPS, uh, which I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we certainly enjoyed it, and we, we said under the circumstances it was a huge success. Um, we're looking forward to CPS 21 now, 2021. So please contact us about that, and uh, the website's all going to be changed up for, for 2021, which we're hoping is going to be virtual and in person as well here in Houston. So I know for people like yourself, Chris, uh, virtual will probably be be the uh, the option but but certainly anybody that can make it here to houston we hope to replicate what we had previously and have a really good face-to-face -face as well 
So during the month of October, uh, people that did purchase tickets, uh, it, all those sessions are still available. Uh, so please go along, look on demand. All the sessions are there. We had some really good sessions from everybody, some really good content. And uh, also you can reach out to the to the people that were exhibited there as well. Okay, Emma? So thank you so much. Uh, so it wasn't so interactive today, but it was just a, it was just a, a basic um, wash up of everything that we've done so far, a quick run through. Um, we are going to change up now. We're going to be changing the format and we're flipping. So we've got some exciting news. Uh, in two weeks' time, Emma and I uh, will be presenting what we're going, to, we're going to be calling the Commissioning Now show. It's going to be at the same time on a Thursday, uh, but under the, under the banner of CPS. We're moving channels now to CPS uh, where it's more agnostic. This has all been about Rev1. Um, but we're going to go under the banner of CPS uh, and then we're going to invite people in. So we're going to have guests and we're going to talk about topical subjects. And, uh, you know, Chris and, uh, and Mark and, uh, and everybody that's been supporting us here, uh, we're going to bring you in and we're going to talk about topical subjects, what's happening on your project. And we're going to have a really good, uh, really good show for an hour on a Thursday, every two weeks for a start under the banner of CPS. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, items like what, what do people want to see at the next CPS, what our plans are, um, the, the mentoring and the certification system that we've got for CPS and all those good things as well. So very, very exciting times. Please keep tuned and uh, find out when, when, we're, when we're having our first show and uh, we'll take it from there. So if there's no kind of comments or if there's no questions, which I don't believe there is, there's a bit of chat here, is there? Let's just have a quick look. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for the comments. Uh, Power BI is a game changer for dashboards. Chris, you're exactly right. And uh, Ben likes the business case, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think Ben, that whole emphasis as we talked about before, where we've, We've, we've changed the polarity from, you know, business value from internal 180 degrees right back onto the client. I think that's a game changer. And uh, that's that's the difference that's making all the difference. So, yeah, good. Well, thank you for your support, guys. Much, much appreciated. And please, as I say, keep, keep posted. And we look forward to seeing you certainly uh, at our first Commissioning Now show which is two weeks to two weeks on Thursday. So stay posted on LinkedIn and uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you and interacting with you more on, on that show. Thanks a lot, guys. All the best for now. Stay safe. Bye, Chris. Yeah, thanks everybody for participating. Much appreciated. Really value your time and uh, comments. Bye for now.